Hey friends, today we are going to be doing some fun summertime projects. The best part about today's video, it's a collab with my creative friends all about summer vibes. So if you like my kind of content, be sure to check the description box below, hop over to their channels for more amazing projects. The first project today is this upcycled planter I made for my front porch. The bottom of my plant stand is going to be the base of this old coat rack. I already used the top for some other projects. And this enamel pan, I added some feet last year. It's worse for wear here. It had its time. It's time to redo it yet again. I'll be using DIY Aviary. This is a beautiful green color and applying my paint with a Klingon F30 brush. It was super simple to clean. DIY paint requires no sanding or prep work. I just wiped it down with a wet rag, a little bit of Dawn dish soap since it's been out in my garage. DIY paint is a clay-based paint. It is highly pigmented and super thick, which means your coverage is going to be amazing. I get pretty great coverage with just one coat of this paint. The Klingon brushes have a synthetic bristle on them it does help minimize the brush strokes when you're using a good quality brush like this and they are super simple to clean. Now I'm going for a bit of a rustic look so I'm doing a little bit of cross hatching, adding some texture into my brush strokes, I'm not worried about a perfect finish here. After one coat you can see there's just a couple of spots I need to go in and touch up and I do flip it over and paint the bottom for a nice finished look. After a coat and a half of paint, it's time to do a little distressing. I hit the edges and just a couple spots on the stand with some 220 grit sandpaper. And I just have a little sanding pad here. You can see it bends and moves around the corners and edges on this piece, super simple. I will link one down in my Amazon shop below. I'm using an outdoor sealer. This is Hellsman's Spar Urethane. It is very durable and like I said, it is safe for outdoor use. So this should hold up for a while. Unlike the DIY paint, this Hellsman's product is not all natural. It is oil based, so make sure you're working outside, you're using your protective equipment, and you are disposing of your products properly when you're done. I use a metal can to put all of my oil soaked products in, that way they do not catch fire in the trash. Now we'll remove the old legs off of this enamel pan. My mistake y'all, I did not use any washers and I just used some random screws. I've learned a lot over the past year. I'm taking a little bit of Bondo. This is a two part putty system. Again, very stinky. Make sure you're using it outside. Part one is the Bondo. Part two is a cream hardener. You mix those two parts together and this will harden like a rock. I'm using this to fill in the hole on top of the post. It was a very large hole and I knew the screw I was using was not gonna be big enough. So this will take care of that problem. I let the top coat and the Bondo sit overnight and then using a metal bit on my drill, I drill a new hole through the middle of the bottom of this enamel pan. I'm going to leave the old holes in there from the legs and that will be the drainage in my new planter. So I've got the hole, the Bondo is all dry. Now I will use a washer and a proper wood screw to screw down my enamel pan onto my post. Also a little bit of Gorilla wood glue to keep it all in place. Now the fun part, let's fill it up. I've got some annuals here. This is Dusty Miller. I am going to bring back the ivy this summer, y'all. Watch me. I got some beautiful green English ivy for my hanging element. 
this early bird white columbine is just gorgeous now this is a perennial i'll put it in the planter for a little while and then i'll pull it before the summer's over stick it in the ground with some other columbine and it'll come back next fall Let's take a look now here at the final project. I just love the way it came out. And of course you could use any kind of pot or pan and wooden base that you had on hand, but leave me a comment below and let me know what you think of my upcycled plant stand. These adorable ducks came from my local hardware store. I only paid $30 for the set of four and I am obsessed. I think they're the perfect little pop of yellow to tie in my plants. Project number two, we are going to update these old wicker planters. In fact, they're not even that old. I grabbed them last year from a garage sale for only $3 for the pair, but I put them outside and they faded like the paint so badly. The wicker is still in great shape, so let's give them an update. We're gonna spray these baskets to make it way easier today. I have a Central Pneumatic HVLP 20 ounce gravity fed sprayer. I use this spray gun off of Zeb's recommendation and I absolutely love them. It was only $17.99 at Harbor Freight. I use them for about six months or a year and then after they're old, I can just toss them and grab a new one. First things first, you will put your filter in the top and your paint cup screws on top of that. This is where your paint will go. There are a couple different adjustments on the gun. The first one is going to adjust your spray pattern to either vertical or horizontal spray. This smaller knob right here will adjust whether it's a fan or a jet, so how much coverage you're going to get out of that spray pattern. This back one adjusts how much paint comes down through your cup. And this one adjusts how much air comes up through the hose from your compressor. So it takes a little bit of practice, but with a couple tries, it is not a hard spray gun to use. Now you see that towel sitting on the desk? That was some oil from the gun. It does recommend that you wash them before the first use, which I did, but I wanted to show y'all. Now let's get our paint ready. Notice the little plug on your lid. This is going to help your paint from spilling, but you'll want to remove that when you're painting or air won't be able to flow through your sprayer. I'm using a DIY black velvet, which is a smooth black paint. I am filtering it through one of the HVLP paint filters. This is a thick paint. You're not gonna want any chunks to clog up your filter. So take the time for that step. Now I'm adding water. It will be a three to one water to paint ratio. So I did five ounces of paint and 15 ounces of water. I like to stir it first and then I shake it up about a hundred times. Again, don't forget to keep the lid plugged when you're shaking it, but remove that plug before you spray. See, the consistency of my paint is much different than what it looked like when it was not watered down. Time to go outside and spray. Make sure you are wearing your protective equipment, eye gear, and lung protection. And you'll see I am just taking my time and spraying this paint on to my wicker basket. I start with it upside down. Little pro tip for you that'll help me to... Um, not miss any spots. Once that first coat is dry, I will turn it over and paint the second coat with them facing straight up. But you can adjust all of your little nozzles on those first couple of sprays to make sure you're getting the perfect spray pattern. And I am spraying at about 90 PSI, which I adjust on my air compressor. 
Here's a look after one coat and you can see that black paint is very velvety smooth. I'll flip him over and here we go for coat number two. Clean the sprayer, I fill the paint cup up with water and spray that all the way through. Then I take it to the kitchen sink, take it all apart and use the little included brush to get off any loose paint. Now I'm using that same Hellsman's Spar Urethane Outdoor Sealer. This time I grabbed it in the can form to make it easy to spray on. I did not want to try to spray this through a paint sprayer and have to deal with the cleanup. This can was $15 and I did use the whole thing. So just keep that in mind. It's a little bit pricier, but worth the time and effort. And here is a look after I put the top coat on. I did three coats of top coat and let them dry overnight. What a beautiful contrast to that bright green fern with that black pop of paint. Our last project today will use scrap wood to make this beautiful wooden garden flag. I had this wood left over from a piece of furniture. I took it apart and I just laid it down in front of my wire piece to get a good idea for the size I needed. I made a couple marks on the longer boards and used my miter saw to cut them in the proper place. Now I'm measuring the distance across the boards and cutting another piece of scrap wood that will act as the trim at the top and bottom of my garden flag. So y'all, don't think you have to go out and buy new wood to make these projects. See what you have in your stash. I used some needle nose pliers to pull out all of the old little nails and screws from the wood. And now it's time to assemble my flag. I used Corella wood glue and laid it across all of the boards and laid my trim piece across that. I used an old weight to hold the board in place while everything dried. Once it was dried, I flipped it over and used a staple gun for some added strength. For a nice soft chippy green paint finish, I'm using Sweet Pickens Milk Paint in O Olive. Now, if you've not used milk paint before, it comes in a powdered form. Don't let that intimidate you. I added a quarter cup of warm water to my mixing bowl, and then I added in a quarter cup of the paint, mixed that up, and I am ready. Now, there is an additive called Extra Bond. It's a product that will help your paint adhere to a non-porous surface, but I'm not using Extra Bond today. I want some good chippy paint over this pretty dry wood. I'm using my Klingon F30 to apply the paint to the board, not really worried about full coverage, and again, just getting the paint on there, I want it to look like a distressed, crusty farmhouse piece. But I did go ahead and flip it over and paint the back, so don't you worry. <laughs> I just did one nice thick coat of milk paint. You can see there's some great coverage and you can see I get a little chipping and crackling. To attach my flag to my holder, I will be using I hooks and S hooks. You see I got closed S hooks. I should have got open S hooks, but that's okay. I grabbed an extra little link from a chain I had in my stash and that worked perfectly. Rust-Oleum Black Matte spray paint I gave them some great coverage I let those dry while I sanded down my piece I've got some 220 grit sandpaper here on my sander and I'm just giving this a quick sand look at that great chipping and crackling I get from the milk paint there's really no other paint out there like this 
Now a quick stencil here. I've got an H out of my large stencils I had in my stash. I'm using that same black velvet paint and this is my JRV one inch stencil brush. I'm applying just a little bit of paint to my stencil brush, offloading most of that paint onto the drop cloth and then using a stippling motion to apply it. I wanted a little detailing around my H. I didn't feel like dragging my Cricut out, so I'm using my JRV Drew Chartres, <laughs> probably saying that wrong, stencil, and I'm just uh, manipulating it the way I want it and getting that little detailing to bend around my H. So don't be afraid to use your stencils in multiple ways, mix and match them for the look you want. Gave that a quick sand for some distressing, and then since I was out of my Hellsman spray, I'm using this Rust-Oleum Clear Matte Enamel. I'll let y'all know how it holds up outside. I drilled a couple pilot holes and I screwed my eye hooks straight into the frame there. Then since my S hooks were closed, I added this little extra link and just pinched it closed using some pliers over a paper towel so I didn't scratch off my new paint. And then I applied the S hook to my little extra link. Once that was on, I just slid it onto my garden flag and I think it came out super cute. This is way more high-end looking than those cheap little vinyl flags you buy at the dollar store that end up blowing away or blowing to shreds by the end of the season. What do y'all think? Leave me a comment below. Do you love my little garden flag? Are you going to try to make one of your own? I hope y'all had fun today with this summer vibes video I made for you. Again, don't forget to check out all of my creative friends down on the playlist in the description box below. Also, if you're new here, subscribe and please give me a thumbs up. That's going to help my channel grow and help me bring you more amazing content. Till next time, I'll see y'all later. Bye, friends. Summertime fun. Summertime fun. Because it's summertime fun. Uh, this is like my 10th intro for the day. <laughs> Summertime fun. All right, did you get that out of your system?